Hey class, we're going to go over a short video on how to form ionic compounds, writing the formula that is. Now first off, what you have to make sure of is with an ionic compound, you have to have a metal and a non-metal. So an element from the left side with an element from the right side. You also have to write the metal first. Regardless of what compound it is, you always write the metal first and then the non-metal. The next step, look at what elements you're dealing with. So let's do this first example, sodium plus chlorine. Find the elements symbol for each. Sodium on the left hand side, symbol is Na. Chlorine over on the non-metal side, symbol is Cl. The second step, after you've got your symbols written down, is to find the oxidation numbers for each of these elements. Now remember, oxidation number equals the number of electrons that are going to be lost or gained during the bonding process. Find sulfur, sodium, excuse me, way over in group 1A. Now, 1A means it has one valence electron. To bond, these elements have to get to either zero or eight valence electrons. If you have one valence electron, it's going to be a lot easier to lose that one than it is to gain seven. So our oxidation number is a one for sodium. Now, is it positive or negative? If you lose an electron, you're positive. If you gain an electron, you're negative. Chlorine over in group 7A has seven valence electrons. So it's going to be easier to gain one than it is to lose seven. So our number is still going to be one, but in this case, it's going to be negative. And then lastly, you crisscross applesauce. This one goes to sodium. This one goes to chlorine. Our final compound formula is simply NaCl. Now, moving on to a different one. Magnesium plus sulfur. Magnesium, if you find its symbol, is Mg. Sulfur is just an S. Now find their oxidation numbers. Magnesium is in group 2A, so it's going to have two valence electrons, but it's still going to be easier to lose two than it is gain six. So our oxidation number is going to be a two. Sulfur on the other side is in group 6A, and it's going to be easier to gain two electrons than it would be to lose six. So it's going to be a two as well. Now, magnesium is the metal, so it's going to be positive because it lost. Sulfur is the non-metal, so it's going to be negative because it gained electrons. Now, crisscross applesauce, the two goes to magnesium, this two goes to sulfur. We end up with Mg to S2. But anytime you can simplify, if you have a 2 and a 2, a 3 and a 3, a 2 and a 4, whatever it might be, you want to simplify. So Mg2, S2 is the same thing as MgS. Lastly, aluminum plus oxygen. If you find aluminum, it's kind of on the right side of the periodic table, but it's still a metal. It's in group 3A, meaning it has three valence electrons. Aluminum symbol is AL. Oxygen symbol, O. Aluminum's three valence electrons are going to go bye-bye. It's easier to lose those three than it is to gain five more. So our number is going to be a three. It's a metal, so it's positive. Oxygen, over in group 6, has 6 valence electrons. It's going to gain 2 because it's easier to, uh, to gain 2 than to lose 6. So its number is 2, and it's a non-metal, so we're going to have a negative charge there. And then lastly, crisscross applesauce. The 2 goes to the aluminum, the 3 goes to oxygen. Our final formula, Al2. O three. 
Next video, we're going to look at how to name these compounds once we have the formula written.